So here in the Azure console, we've got brand new engineer, Frank, logged in. Um, he's got a login to Azure, and he's got some rights to see things like virtual machines, etc. However, if we click on the three dots against one of the virtual machines here, we'll see that Frank's not allowed to connect, start, restart, etc. on this virtual machine because he doesn't have the rights to do that. And if we go over to an admin user, we can see within our subscriptions here, if we go into access control and search for Frank. We'll see that Frank is set up as a virtual machine user logon role which gives him some rights to see things, but we want to add in rights to be able to restart machines and start up machines if he has to. So if we go over to PowerShell, we can use the get Azure RM role definition commandlet in order to see the roles that are available to apply. And you can see Frank's role there, virtual machine user logon is listed towards the bottom of this list. And we can also see the is custom attribute as well, which shows that all of these are built in roles because we haven't created any custom roles yet. So if we look at the line 12 here, that gets the role definition that Frank has applied to him and looks at the actions that that role has against it. So if we look at the list there, we'll see that there's a lot of read going on, but there's not very much write or restart, etc. So what we can do is use the get as your RM provider operation commandlet or anything that's associated with virtual machines. And that will list out all of the actions that are related to virtual machines that we could apply to this role. So we've got Microsoft Compute Virtual Machines start action and a restart action as well, which is the two we want to apply to Frank's user. So again, if we go back to the PowerShell, we can start to build up a role using the current role that Frank's got, the virtual machine user logon. And if we look at the details within that variable, we'll see that the actions here show us the actions that we saw earlier against this role. So what we need to do is use this to build up our own custom role. So first thing we need to do is remove the role ID and blank that out because we're going to create a new role. And then we add our own name and description into our variable for this role. And on line 27 and 28 here, we're adding in the start action and the restart action. And the last thing we need to do to this variable is clear down the assignable scopes and assign that to the ID of our current subscription. And once that variable is completed and we've added in all the bits, if we go and take a look at that, we'll see that we've got a new name and a new description. So we can use that with the new Azure RM role definition commandlet to create a new role called virtual machine restarter. Now, if, if we go back to our very first command that we ran and look at all the roles available, we have at the very top of the list here, our new custom role, which is called virtual machine restarter. So if we go back to our admin user and remove Frank's current role and add Frank in with the new role, which is called virtual machine restarter. Select Frank and click on save. And once that role is assigned, if we go back to Frank's login, refresh the page, and look at our virtual machine here, we now have the option to restart it. So now if we want to add more into this role, we can go back to PowerShell, and we can look at the get Azure RM provider operation commandlet, and if we just run that, it will give us a huge list of actions that are available in order to add into that login. So if we use the get Azure RM provider operation and just list it out for everything, not just the virtual machine actions, and look at the operations that are available, we'll have a huge list of just about everything in Azure that we could apply to that particular role. Thanks for watching.